Hello everyone, welcome to another lesson of learning Kurdish language and this is our 23rd lesson and it, it is about politi uh, political war, you know, it's about the political words, politics related kind of thing, war and stuff like that. I didn't plan to make this lesson, but I make this lesson for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is as, it's like a it is as a support to Rojava, which is now under attack by the Turkish government. Um, you know, in the last couple of days, um, Turkey started an offense against the Kurds in uh, in uh, northern Syria, which is the it is a semi-autonomous region, which is called Rojava. Rojava basically means uh, the west which is the west 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 of Kurdistan so basically Turkey started an offensive there and um, like uh, as far as I know till till this moment 200 200 people got injured and died because of because of Turkish offensive against against them sadly I cannot be there physically to help people out there like providing medical help or any 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 other thing right I cannot be there to fight, sadly, you know. Uh, so many, many of my friends and many people, they criticize me that I don't write about that and I, I don't, I don't show, and I, you know, I, I'm not doing anything against that. Uh, I just like to say that this war, it is there for thousands of years and it will go on and on for the next thousands of years. The idea is not that I support Kurdish people over Turkish people. I don't like to, I, I basically don't like to um, heat the pot more and more. Um, Kurdish people and Turkish people, both of them are great people. Okay, uh, the problem, the problems are governments. The governments are the problem. Uh, the politicians are the problems. Uh, I have no hate toward any Turkish people and I have not love the, to any bad people from both sides. What I mean is that in order to stop these kind of wars, we need to, we need to change ourselves as individuals, as human beings. Me helping one side over the other one does not solve the problem by, 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 by sharing a hashtag or support Rojava or do that to Rojava, it does not help them. Rojava does not need your hashtag. Rojava needs your hand. It, it needs you to be there physically or it needs you at least do something that can, that would, you know, create peace in some way. Sadly, I cannot be there physically and sadly, I cannot go there and fight physically be there, you know. I wish I could. Um, but now at least I can create a lesson in which I share more awareness about them and I, I also teach some Kurdish language to other people, to non-Kurdish people, so that they can be more aware. And as a solidarity to Kurdish people, you can learn Kurdish in a way. You can understand us more. Because Kurdish people say we have no friends but the mountains. So hopefully through the, this video, we are going to make some more friends apart from mountains. Of course, mountains are great. Um, they are great, a great Kurdish symbol. We love mountains so much, but um, it's also very lonely when we, I mean, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. I remember, I mean, the movies and um, the talks about Kurdish people going to the mountains whenever there is big war. Mountains are great friends, our best friends in, in a way, but yeah. Anyway, the um, the sketch that you see on the, on, on the screen, it's made by someone, Berzenji, I think maybe Sozan Berzenji, maybe I, I, Sana Berzenji, I don't know. I don't know it's really by whom, but uh, the, the, um, the sketch is beautiful. It shows a Kurdish female fighter um, who plays her violin, but the violin is in the shape of AK-47. I believe the idea is that the weapon is used as an art. The weapon is used as, a, as, as an instrument to bring peace to 
the people they are protecting. Anyway, hopefully everything is going to be fine in Rojava. When I talk about, uh, in Rojava, I don't like to take. I don't like to, to, to share hatred messages toward Turkish people. I've been to Istanbul and I know Turkish people are amazing, Kurdish people are amazing, Americans are amazing, French people are amazing, Chinese people are amazing. There is no, I mean, peoples are not, the the mistake is not peoples. Well, peoples, they, they, in a way, they, they, they do have mistakes. I mean, they have to educate themselves enough not to fall for the stories of the government. Um, but overall, I don't like to share hatred message toward any kind of people. But of course I will share a hate speech toward the government. Turkish government is bullshit. Kurdish government is bullshit. Um, Chinese government is super bullshit. Uh, all the government, count them one by one. I don't like politicians, I don't like politics. But I will, um, some news media related we, we're going to learn some news media related words and some politics related words. Anyway, um, it's a beautiful sketch. Whoever made it, great, great job. Anyway, so let's start with a set of words that are politics, uh, politics related. Politics in Kurdish is Ramyari or Siyaset, but we usually use Siyaset in colloquial. I mean, in our daily life, we use siyaset, even on TV we use siyaset, but the Ramyadi is also used uh, by academics, by the writers, uh, sometimes on the TV as well. This is a very, oh my god, what am I doing? This is a Kurdish word, but siyaset is an, it, it came from Arabic. Politician, siyaset madar, or Ramyadi zan, or, or siyaset wan. Siyaset wan is not necessarily, is not necessarily necessarily a politician. Siyaset one can be somebody who is working with politics, maybe he's an opposed side, he's an opposed politician, or probably he's just a politician, probably he's someone who writes about politician, uh, 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 writes about politics. But however, they both three are synonyms for politician, um, for a politician for the word politician. Government is hukmat, and hukmat is an Arabic word. Uh, in recent years, people try to bring Kurdish words alive, but hukmat people are using it in a way that it's hard to substitute it for another word easily. It must start from the government, and the government, they do not do this. Uh, anyway, constitution is dastur, which is an, another word came from Arabic. The dastur is also, I mean, uh, you can also see the same word in, in Persian. I don't know if they use the same word for constitution, uh, but um, for example, if you say the grammar of uh, Persian, the grammar of Persian, you say dastur is a one in Farsi in Persian. So they use dastur as a as a rule, right? Any anyway, constitution is dastur, but in, in Kurdish you also can say, by the way, you can say ktebiya um, sakan means the book of the rules. Sometimes you can use these kind of expression in, in, in academic writing in a way. Uh, law means yasa. Law means yasa. Um, we have a famous saying, kas la yasa barister barister niya. means nobody uh, nobody is higher. Nobody is higher than the law. That's a Kurdish saying. I think I don't know in in English. I don't know if you have the same or similar equivalent expression, but in f uh, in German in Germany they ha they have like Ordnung muss sein. Um, Ordnung muss sein means r order must be there. Um, so yeah, corruption. Corruption is gandali. Uh, there's an Arabic word which is used facade as well, but we, nowadays we use the Kurdish word. Like gandali is everywhere. Like everybody is using the word, and you can see it again and again on the news channels. You talk about that. Uh, we have reform. Reform. There are two words for it. There is a reform, and there is chaksazi. There are synonyms. 
but we use checks as in more for political corruption and we use reform for other types of corruption uh, for example um, the reform of university in, in 2004 and these times there was an idea of reforming at university to reform the university and they called it reform they didn't call it chaksazi though both of the words are somewhat the same thing uh, but anyway there are synonyms and uh, yeah but Gandali and chaksazi these two words you see them side by side all the time in the news uh, political system, you can say regime siyasi or system siyasi. System siyasi is used more than regime siyasi, but regime itself means system. Regime means system. It's exactly like the word regime. You know, regime, it's a word for system. Uh, so, political system, you can say regime siyasi or you can say system siyasi. Uh, democracy. Democracy in Kurdish, we say democracy or we, we say democracy. Yet. Both of them means democracy. Okay, now let me show you something here. Uh, breaking news. It's a, uh, it is, you can say Hawali Bapala. Hawali Bapala, which means breaking news. Bapala means in a hurry. Okay, Bapala means in a hurry. Hawal means news. And E means it's 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 similar. I, I I explain it all the time. It's similar to do in French, izafe in Persian, of in English. Um, if I'm not wrong, it's kua in Vietnamese. Maybe I don't know. But anyway, hawali bapala means a news which is in a hurry. Uh, but what you mean is breaking news. Uh, but usually in Kurdish, on Kurdish TVs, when there is a, you know, a, a, a breaking news, they would write Bapala. Okay, they say Bapala. So they don't say Hawa. Bapala. Okay. Uh, you also can say Bapala only. You don't, you don't have to use Hawa, Hawa, Bapala, you know. I mean, that's, uh, it can be optional. Um, it can be optional. Pew. Okay, uh, so let's go to the news. Well, news in Kurdish is Hawal. Uh, you can say Hawal or Hawalakan. Uh, Hawalakan is basically the plural of Hawal, okay? Hawal means one news or news. Uh, Hawalakan means the news, you know, the, it's a plural in a way. International, because usually when I when I check news, uh, the, there is a section called usually in Kurdish uh, in Kurdish uh, websites, you know the, uh, the the news channels, right? Uh, there is uh, Kurdish Kurdish news about Kurdistan, Iraq, Middle East, and international news um, about the world, Jihan, Hawali Jihan, etc. So. Um, the word international, it, it's kind of Hawali Neodolati, etc. It's, it's better to know this word, which is international in Kurdish is Neodolati. Neodolati. Okay. Uh, fake news Hawali Dro or Hawali Sahta or Hawali Narast. Usually, uh, in television, you don't hear this phrase Hawali Dro. Or Hawali Sahta. I mean, Hawali Sahta is really underused, but Hawali Dro it's 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 impolite. Hawali Naras is more polite and it's more TV friendly, I would say, um, because Hawali Dro means the, the lying news. Like, for example, you tell someone To Hawali Dro Blau Daketawa means you are spreading a lie. You are spreading lies or lying news or something like that um, this is more this is a severe way of talking uh, but Hawali Naras which means the untrue untrue news untrue Naras means untrue not true untrue right is more TV friendly sometimes you can say you can see the word draw which means lie is used on TV but it, when it gets like when the both sides are opposing each other into a degree that they do not really respect one another 
so Hawali Naras is, is just commonly used on TV. Uh, Hawali Do is, is mostly used between people. For example, say, oh, the, the, this news is, is it's a lie, you know. Oh, Hawala Droya means that news is a lie. Okay, demonstration, which you would you, you see that demonstration happens everywhere. So demonstration is Hopishanda in Kurdish. There was another word which is called Muzahara, but in recent years we use Hopishandan more than the Arabic words. We don't use the Arabic word anymore. We use Hopishandan in the way that we talk, in, in the writing, in that, in that, in that. The word the Arabic word is used less and less. Uh, this word Hopishandan is well, it has been there in like come on, so it, it's there since the Kurdish language is there, but uh, we didn't use it till recent years because the TV had a big impact on that, you know, to change the way that we we use the language. They, they, they basically cleaned the language from the borrowed words from Arabic and etc. But in, in contrast to that, a lot of English words got into Kurdish. Uh, a lot of Kurdish and French words get into Kurdish, which is actually I didn't want to make this lesson. I wanted to make a lesson in future, which I in which I talk about like maybe fifty or twenty or thirty borrowed words from English to Kurdish, uh, the true French words, and um, you could use them right away if if you speak English or French or um, the, the other languages that I talk about in in the in my next video. Uh, you would see that there are a lot of words that I wish are similar and. Uh, so you would learn Kurdish faster and faster. We have many English words. And Kurdish and English, both of them are Indo-European languages. So we have many similar words. For example, muscle in Kurdish is masulka. So, I mean, you see it's, it's very close to one another. War, we have two words for that. There is an Arabic word as well, but now we don't use the Arabic word anymore. So we have jank and shar. The R at the end is strong. Rrr. Okay, like the, like like Spanish Ricardo, you know, like Portuguese and Spanish. So, but it's, it's it's a bit stronger than that as well. So anyway, you have jung and you have sharp. There there was another word hadab, but hadab is an Arabic word. Defense defense bergiri. There was another Arabic word, but we don't use it. Uh, Herish means attack. There is another Arabic word, uh, hujum, which is so far is, uh, it's used, but hujum is, it, I mean, we use hedish more than more than that. Um, no mistake. Explosion, which is a word that I heard it a lot when I was younger, uh, because th there was a time, especially before two thousand five, and. There were, there were a lot of explosions. Um, even an explosion happened near my father one time, and uh, when he came home, all his body was bleeding. Not it was not his blood; it was other people, other people's blood. When in which he went to help them, and because he was a police officer, um, he, he, he's a traffic police officer. So, uh, in in summer, they are wearing white shirt. Okay, so they are wear, wearing white shirt. So all his body were you know, were bleeding. Uh, well, it seems like he was bleeding, though uh, he, he was helping people and taking people to a hospital. In, in, it happened in, in the place that he was working, in, uh, near the, actually it was beside that, I think. But uh, anyway, um, I even remember one time my mother sent me to buy something in, 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 in the shop. So when I went there, uh, not near me, but it was, like maybe 10 blocks away or 11 blocks away, there was an explosion. I, it was just just horrible uh, at the time. But yeah, <laughs> look, I have great memories with war. Uh, but, but anyway, yeah, I mean, explosion, you might hear it as again and again. And for example, here, the word explosion is there. For example, look here, that word is explosion. Taqiyawa means it exploded. Uh, but explosion means taqinawa. Uh, uh, you conjugate the word, you change the form of the word depending on the place in the sentence, but the, the explosion means taqino. You might hear this word a lot uh, in, in Middle Eastern news. Um, okay, our last slide. Uh, war, as I said, it means jung or shar. Shar is also a word for war. 
Uh, but let me tell you something. Shot can also be a fight between two. Shot means fight, basically. Uh, you can you can fight with your girlfriend. You can fight with your friend. You can fight with a stranger. But you don't w make a war with some. You don't wage war against your girlfriend. I mean that's stupid, even in English, right? Semantically speaking. So um, it, they can be synonym synonyms, but you cannot use junk for everyday situations when you when you have a you know when you have when you are fighting with somebody. Um, peace, uh, peace is ashti. Uh, freedom is azadi. You hear this word a lot by Kurdish revolutionists. Uh, weapon is chuck, chuck. It's not a, ah, it's a eh, chuck. Uh, gorilla. Oh my God! I think I I misspelled it. Yeah. Gorilla is gerila. You hear this word a lot, especially. Well, in in in, in northern, in nor in in southern in in southern Kurdistan, uh, the place that I come from. We don't we, we we use the word peshmerga for the forces right for the uh, for our army though technically uh, uh, t technically the the, um, the other Kurdish fighters in other parts of Kurdistan like in Syria in, in, in Turkey in Iran they are also peshmerga okay but there is another word they use gerila uh, missile is mushak. There was another Arabic word, saruh, which is so far it's used, but uh, nowadays mushak is it's taking over all the news. And hey, you just say mushak, mushak, mushak. You don't use saruh anymore. And actually, the new generation they they don't really know. Even if you say saruh, probably they know. Probably they don't know because now mushak, which is the Kurdish word, uh, it is it is you. It is your. It is used again. Uh, army, it's spa. Well, if you notice, if you add S, it becomes thank you, uh, spas. Uh, so, army means spa. Uh, there was another Arabic word, jaysh. Soldiers means serbas. Uh, there was another Arabic word, jundi, serbas. Uh, there is a, there is, um, uh, th th there is a Kurdish poem by Abdullah Pasha called Serbazi. Win, which means the lost, uh, the lost soldier. I, I, I don't know. In English, there was a, the, there was something similar. The lost soldier. The unknown soldier or the lost soldier. I, I don't really know. Um, the lost soldier. I don't know. I think there was a statue about that, if I'm not wrong. But anyway, there is a Kurdish poem called Serbazi Win, which means the soldier of lost or soldier of let me see if I can find the synonym a better synonym for the poem uh, um, yeah the soldier of bygone or the bygone soldier something like that it's, it's a beautiful poem we had studied at school um, five years ago I think I, I don't know. yeah I said it a long time ago um, commander means in Kurdish, we say fermanda. Fermanda is commander, uh, someone who, uh, someone who gives orders. And uh, and actually, in in Rojava, even in 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 in, in uh, northern in southern Kurdistan, in northern Kurdistan, even in the west e eastern Kurdistan, we are we have uh, there are women who are um, who are commanders. So women are commanding armies, uh, and actually we have a, a long history about the Kurdish women uh, fighting in the forces and having, uh, I mean, having like commanding armies. Uh, there are, I mean, uh, well, we have so many stories. That, for example, Khanzadi Soran, who was the the princess of Soran, uh, the Khan, the princess Khanzad of Soran, uh, she was a strong ruler. There, the, 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 there are so many women that, that, that I don't I don't possibly remember all of them right now. But I mean, since a long time, the Kurdish women they were into politics and and an army, and they are they are really good fighters. Uh, they are I mean sometimes better than men. Proud of them. Anyway, uh, have a nice day, everybody, and hopefully everything is going to be. Um, 
in the near future, I hope everything everything to be good with Rojava. I mean, my heart beats with every single person out there. So uh, hopefully everything's going to be fine. So have a nice day, guys. And um, yeah, please support Rojava.